Well, today is Cesar Chavez Day. It is a time when we look back at the labor and civil rights leader's legacy advocating for better wages and safer working conditions for farm workers. Throughout his life, Chavez led hundreds of sit in protests, hunger strikes, and boycotts to pressure farm owners and the government into granting strikers demands. Chavez championed nonviolent social change, fought for better housing and access to education for workers and their families, and raised awareness around the struggles farm workers and their families face. Chavez's history with immigration was complex at times. He often clashed with undocumented immigrants, claiming they drove down wages and undermined the actions of American workers. But Chavez's legacy still cements him as an American labor rights hero. And as we honor that legacy today, we also honor those who were right there alongside with him. Dolores Huerta, along with Chavez, launched the National Farm Workers Association, which would later become the United Farm Workers of America. And this morning, we have Dolores Huerta joining us live through Zoom. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and you know, as we think about today, I mean, Cesar Chavez Day comes every year, but what is something you hope people this year remember? Well, uh, what Cesar stood for, especially you mentioned on violence, and uh, we're living in such a violent uh, period of time right now, especially now we have political violence, and we can just, you know, have people remember that we can solve our issues and that we don't have to do it through violence. And we know that the violence that is permeating our society right now is taking the lives of children like we have seen recently. And we know that this has to change. So I believe that the, the tactics of nonviolence should be actually taught in our school. The other thing too is remembering that farm workers are essential workers. Now we think of police and we think of firemen and healthcare workers as essential workers. But when we really realize who are the most essential workers? The people that put the food on our table every single day. But even today, even with the improvements that we won uh, with the Farm Workers Union, that today farm workers are still not paid the equivalent that policemen and firemen are paid, even though they are the most, most essential workers. So Sessa has a tremendous legacy that he left behind. But unfortunately, the laws that we passed were Farm workers to have bathrooms in the field, cold drinking water, rest periods, unemployment insurance. There are only three states in the United States that have those benefits for farm workers, and it's California, Hawaii, and New York State. So we still have a long way to go to fulfill the legacy of CESA. Right, and you mentioned just you know the fact that farm workers are essential workers, and throughout California, including here in the Bay Area, farm workers have faced a number of challenges. COVID nineteen, of course, and here locally, there was a shooting in Half Moon Bay that left seven dead. That also revealed some of their living conditions, and of course, with the storms, we have seen flooding in some of these areas. I wanted to ask you if you felt like enough is being done for our communities here in California. Yes, uh, we still have a long way to go. And uh, because farm workers are, uh, you might say, quote unquote, invisible, and we don't see them every day because they're out there in the fields. And, and the farm workers have been very, very hard hit, both by the pandemic and now with all the flooding. I mean, in fact, some of the areas like near Watsonville, Pajaro, here in the Central Valley of California, many of the farm workers are uh, there in Pajaro, they, uh, uh, they completely lost their homes, you know. And so we have to remember that. And also here in the Central Valley, uh, many farm workers are going to be out of work for a long time <clears throat> because the fields are going to be flooded and they're not going to have any, they're not going to be able to work. And the undocumented farm workers, uh, they don't have unemployment insurance like the, like mm -hmm. the, uh, that have their legal status here. So a lot of those undocumented families are going to be mm -hmm. in dire straits right now because of, of the, of the weather, because yeah. of the rain. Yeah, and exactly. And thank you for mentioning really all of that, especially everything that they have been through. They are resilient. Thanks so much. We appreciate you being here with us this morning.